Okay, so um, the next one is a bonus issue. So a bonus issue um, <clears throat> really is a scenario where um, a, a the directors of a company um, don't have any, or they might do, they don't have any cash to pay out dividends. So what they do is they transfer, if you like, value elsewhere to the shareholders from some sort of reserve. So for example, um, I think the example I might have given in class is you have a scenario that looks like this, A minus L is equal to C. So you have these assets, so for example, you have non-current assets of 10 million, and you have trade receivables of five, and then you have current liabilities of say three, so your net assets are actually 12, right? But then you have ordinary shares of maybe a four, and you have retained earnings of eight so that's how you have this 12 12 balance now if you wanted to pay out a dividend you can't because you have no cash so what could you do what you could do is you could transfer retained earnings so basically debit retained earnings so you have retained earnings debit retained earnings and credit ordinary shares so you're literally just transferring reserves from one area to to the next um Yes, and that's kind of the, 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 the process, really. So there is no new money coming in. New, new, a new share issue would have been debit bank and then credit ordinary shares, right? And share premium if you had if you had paid more than you should have. So what we see here is that we have money coming in, but we don't have... Um, so what, Sorry, what we see here is we just have literally a transfer of reserve. So that's kind of what a bonus issue really is really is so um, a bonus issue does not provide any additional resources to the issuer and it means that it owns the same proportion of the business before and after the and after the issue um, so in the calculation of EPS the bonus issue the bonus shares are deemed to have been issued at the start ah, so for fairness for comparison for ease if we want to compare different businesses we don't treat the bonus share like we would treat say the market issue where we weight it per se um, based on from when we we don't say I mean because we don't sort of do any proportion no we just treat the bonus issue as having started at the beginning of the year as though the shares had always existed because the truth is you've just doubled the or whatever you've just increased the, the the number of shares proportionally for everyone that's all you've done and so we it, you can see here it says they are deemed so this is very much via the standard um the standard as as asked everyone issuing bonus issues to treat it as though it starts at the beginning of the year so also comparative figures, if you like, are restated. So we have to do, so if you're going to multiply all the shares, so if we have 2008 and 2009, if you're going to multiply all the um, shares in 2009 by two, but you, in 2009, now if I want to compare 2009 and 2008, I mean, all I have to do is multiply all the shares in 2008 by two as well, so I can compare one year to the next. So comparative figures are restated to allow for the proportional increase in share issues. So let's sort of just to understand what's really going on here. Um, Mr. A owns 5,000 shares in company B, which has an issued share cap of 100,000 shares. So Mr. A owns 5% of the company, right? Mr. A owns 5% of B, 5% of the, of the company. Now, he makes a one-for-one -one bonus issue. So for every share you have, you get another one. Um, <clears throat> so now he owns 10,000, but everyone else has gotten a one for one. So every, the whole company, all the shares in the company have increased from 100,000 to 200,000. So he now owns 10,000 out of 200,000. So he still owns 5% of the company. So, um, again, like I say, this is done and issued at the start of the earliest accounting period, regardless of the actual date this, um, if you like, um, took place. And again, this is really to enable comparability, if you like, um, to occur, as opposed to doing it in any other way. Okay, right, good. Let's look at an example. So here we have a bonus issue happening. Um, so let me even explain the, how we talk about this bonus. This is an important exp um, f word I want to introduce um, here. And I'll just talk about it in a second. An entity makes a bonus issue of one new share for every five. So if you have five shares, 
the director is giving you an extra share. So now you have six. So there is a way we can always work this out. I mean, therefore, if you have two, they're giving you two. If you have 10, forgive me, they're giving you two. Well, now you have 12. So we have what's referred to as a bonus fraction where we can work out what your new number of shares are. If you think about it, if you had five, well, if I literally multiply this, right, by six over five, so that's what you get six you know we do it based on the initial starting point of one new share for every five so you have five you get an extra one so it now means that you now have six so if you had 10 and i multiply this by six over five you now have 12. so i can now figure out um, how many shares you have so when i start here this was when the bonus issue was made on the 1st of July, um, 2008. So again, we assume that you actually made this issue on the 1st of January, 2008. So therefore, we then assume, therefore, it's a bonus issue. And it says that you are issuing um, one new, I mean, this is what it is. I mean, this is the, this is the, this is the, this, these bonus issues are shares, by the way. So those are the extra 200. So what you did was you had 1,000, 1 million, forgive me, 1 million shares. You did the bonus issue, 6 over 5, and therefore you now have 1.2 million. And that's what we see right here, 1.2 million. So um, where are we? So we have 1.2 million, which means that our, um, um, I assume this happened for the whole year. I don't weight it up. So therefore my, my EPS based on this is 550,000 divided by um, 1.2 million. The same would I would assume, and I'll show you, I mean, it's the same thing for 2007. I, th in 2007, I would have calculated my EPS as 460 divided by a million, right? And had 0 0.46. But with this new system, I need to calculate the, to, to do a re a recalculation so that I can compare X7 to X8. So I should really be doing 460,000 divided by 1.2 million. And that's what I do. And I'll show you how I do it really quickly. But so I have here 550 divided by 1.2 by 1.2 million. I'm just going to do that very quickly. So I have 550,000 divided by 1.2 million. And here I have 0 0.45. 0 0.458 so i guess you can call this 0 0.46 um so then i have here um, so i had 0 0.46 here in this year so i could have done you know like i said i could have said 460 which is what i am doing divided by by this but let's look at what i'm really saying here i'm saying here that i'm saying this was my initial position right 460,000 divided by 1 million so really, what I'm really saying here is multiply this by the bonus fraction, which is really times um, 6 over 5. Isn't that what I'm, I mean, that's what I'm ultimately saying. Take this to 1.2 million. Because if you had this already, if you already had this answer already, already you, in a way you're saying 0 0.46 over 6 over 5, if you like, if, to a certain extent. But we know in maths, if you have this type of situation, you're really saying 0 0.46 times 5 over 6. So if you have the earnings per share from the prior period and you're trying to convert it based on the bonus issue, you can just multiply it by the inverse of the bonus fraction. Or you could just divide it, the actual earnings, by the actual new number of shares as a result of the bonus issue and arrive at exactly the same amount. But I think it's a good thing to play with. So you have 0 0.46 here times 5 over 6, 0 0.46 times 5 divided by 6, and you have 0 0.38, 0 0.38, if you like, 3, 3 happening here. And that's how we deal with bonus issues. That's how we deal with bonus share issues. Let's very quickly look at this um, next example here. So here we have a scenario where we have here, um, this is TYU2. So we have a business that runs from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. So we have X1 to X2, and we have the same thing again, 1st of April, X2 to the 31st of March, X3. So I have this picture. Now, what do I have here? Um, I have it says here, one pound ordinary shares, you've raised seven million pounds worth of capital. So you have seven million shares. That's what you have at the moment. So it says that you did a bonus issue, one for every seven in August, on the 31st of August, 2002. So in this period here. So, and this is an ending year end, 31st of March, and those are your profits. So, I mean, 
obviously, right, if I multiply this by the bonus fraction, this is 7 times 8 over 7, so you have 8 million shares. So straight away I can tell you that your EPS for 2003 is 1.15 million divided by 8. Yes, 1.15 million divided by 8, 1.15 million divided by 8, and you have here 0 0.143. 0 0.144 it doesn't really matter that's your your EPS for 2003 and literally I should be doing exactly the same thing 750 divided by um, sorry 0 0.75 divided by 8 again I mean you could have found you could have done 750 of course divided by 7 and then now you get that answer you just need to tweak that a little by multiplying that by the bonus fraction if you like to I'm really saying the same thing, aren't I? Ultimately, I need to arrive at 0 0.75 divided by 8. I need to be dividing by the same number of shares, assuming that had always been the case. So 0 0.75 divided by 8 takes me to 0 0.09, 0 0.093, 0 0.094, if you're rounding up. And there you are. And there you have it um, for this, this question. So that's how we do with bonus issues. Always take them right from the start of the year. Start of the year. Um, and then, yeah, and that's how we, we, we deal with it. Now, of course, when I say start of the year, we are assuming that that's all that happened, there were, that there were no market issues. If there were, we would stop at the bonus date. But anyway, we'll see We'll see how that works. So technically, in this scenario, the, the, the full year is taken into, condition, into consideration because that's all that happened for the whole, for, that's what happened for the whole, um, for the whole year. Okay, great stuff. So um, I will see you in the next in the next video where we tackle, um, we move on to. Um, so please do, please do um, a bit of deep TY TY YouTube to further practice. Of course, oh, was that TY YouTube we just did here? Oh yeah, that's TY YouTube. We've done it. <laughs> so um, that's fine. Um, so bonus and market issue combined. So you could have both, and that's what we're going to tackle in the next in the next video where you have a bonus issue, but you also have a a market issue. Um, as well. So it's just dealing with both and we'll talk about that in the next video.